Good morning. In Exodus 3.11, Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt? Like Moses, I've always felt unsuited and ill-prepared for the task placed before me. The image often portrayed today of the ideal preacher's wife is of a woman who is Bible college trained, teaches women's and children's classes, leads the ladies' fellowship, plays several instruments, and sings in the choir, volunteers for every missionary activity, presents herself as the perfect PR person for both her husband and the congregation. In the early years of our marriage, I felt as if I couldn't do any of these things. All I ever wanted in marrying Jonathan was to be a good Christian and a good wife and mother. I also had a new mother-in-law who was a preacher's wife. And it seemed to me that she fit the ideal image I just mentioned. This is hard because mother's no longer here. This was extremely intimidating, especially as I heard many of her stories of her life as being a minister's wife. Several years later, I began to experience some of the stories. Oops, I lost my place. Um, this was extremely intimidating, especially as I heard many of her war stories as a minister's wife. Several years later, I began to experience some of those war stories for myself. I witnessed as my father-in-law was subjected to persecution and ridicule as a result of his preaching the word. On our last Sunday in that congregation to which he ministered, only one woman sat with our family to support the truth. Since that time, 10 years have passed and I've stood by my husband's side as he has faced the exact same scenario more than once. Twice he has been fired because he did not shrink from the, clear, from the declaring the whole word and purpose of God. And through it all, I have continued to doubt my fitness as a minister's wife. Fortunately, I've received encouragement from the Lord in Acts 20:24, 20, As the Apostle Paul says, I do not consider my life of any account as dear to myself in order that I may finish my course and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify solemnly of the gospel of the grace of God. I've had to adopt this apostle's attitude since the day I received from the Lord my ministry as a preacher's wife. Over the last 17 years, I have learned that I do not have to be as talented as every other minister's wife. I may not play an instrument, I do like speaking in public, but I do love my husband and I, do every, I will do everything in my power to help him in the preaching of the gospel. God has helped me to grow and over the years I have learned to perform many of the tasks that had once seemed so daunting. I now have a better understanding of what the apostle meant when he said, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. The subject of this, renewals, this year's renewal is the grace of God. I understand grace to be that which the Lord has provided for me, which I could not provide for myself. In my service as a minister's wife, that seems to cover just about everything. There is no part of our marriage in which we have not seen the wonderful providence of God. He has made it abundantly clear in every place when we should stay and when we should go. Despite persecution, he has met our needs and added blessing upon blessing beyond those basic needs. Truly the psalmist spoke correctly in Psalm 8411, the Lord God is his sun and shield. The Lord gives grace and glory. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Based on that scripture, I realize now that my main task in being a helper to my husband is to walk uprightly before the Lord. I still feel uncomfortable in situations like this one, but I understand that life isn't about me. It's about the Lord and his will and his word. No longer do I consider my life of any account as dear to myself in order that I may finish my course and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to help my husband as he testifies solemnly of the gospel of the grace of God. Throughout the years, we have seen those who have called themselves friends turn their back on us. We've watched people make the good confession and join with Christ in baptism only to forsake him when the way became too difficult. Oh, so many occasions it seemed as if Jonathan's parents were the only two people supporting us. As Brother Gene preached yesterday from 2 Thessalonians 2, 16 and 17, the apostle writes, May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us eternal comfort and good hope by grace, comfort and strengthen your hearts in every good work and word. I truly believe that our comfort and strength has been given and provided through the scriptures and through Mother and Papa. Never once have they ever failed us. And neither has the Lord failed us either. Amen. 
Truly his grace has been sufficient for us. And we have seen his power perfected in our weakness. It's not always easy to be the light in the middle of darkness. And that's why Psalm 512 is such a blessing. David sings, for it is thou who dost bless the righteous man, O Lord. Thou dost surround him with grace as with a shield. I thank God for my family and for my husband who will not be intimidated by Satan. Most of all, I am thankful that the Lord's grace has surrounded us like a shield. God made a promise to Abraham that was ultimately fulfilled through Christ and his body, the church. God promised in Luke 1, 74 through 75 to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear and holiness and righteousness before him all our days. I may never be the perfect preacher's wife, <laughs> but that's all right. Jesus hasn't told me to be the perfect preacher's wife just to be perfect as my heavenly father is perfect. Therefore, in whatever time I have left as a helper to my husband, I will simply concentrate on serving the Lord without fear and holiness and righteousness. And I know that his amazing grace will supply that which is lacking and make me a vessel for honor, sanctified, useful to the master and prepared for every good work.